Hey everybody, J Mac here in a video I wanted to share quickly on creating MVP features. Um, if you all know and have followed me or seen me speak at conferences, you know that I'm really big into practicing Yagni. Uh, in fact, uh, talk is out on uh, YouTube if you want to take a look at it. Uh, it's actually a, a talk I'm really proud of. But the point is, is that I, I always try to find um, kind of the minimal uh, feature set or, or minimal thing I can build uh, whenever I'm, I'm building something around uh, one of my products or services. So in this case, I was working on something with Shift, and even when I try to find this, this is, this is not always such an easy process. So I just thought um, it'd be a good idea to kind of share the evolution of this uh, with just kind of a really specific example. Uh, so I was working on a new feature for Shift, and it allows you uh, with a subscription to create um, automation uh, around your different repositories. So you can set them up to um, kind of automatically receive updates when updates are available. So it just makes it super simple where you don't have to think about anything. And that was kind of the premise, right? It was just even more automation for something like Shift, which is already, um, even for those that aren't familiar, you can see is all about this automated instant you know, upgrading, right? And so what I built around this was kind of a form where you went in and put uh, information uh, around uh, the automation that you wanted to occur. And I had thought I actually had this pretty trimmed down, but it turns out that um, not only my own process of trimming this down, but in fact, uh, after talking with Adam, uh, Adam Wathen, about this and kind of getting his input on some of these pieces, uh, found that there was even more I could do. And so I just, again, want to kind of walk through from top to bottom the evolution kind of of this screen and this code. So first things first, I wanted to make sure that you, uh, of course, can schedule the automation. So just a real simple question here. Do you want to enable automation with your Shifty plan? This is your subscription. So you can kind of turn it on or off. And there's a couple different elements here, and this is where things kind of I had originally thought were MVP. I'd already made some choices beforehand, but found that even some of these small form fields, even just one or two of these additional form fields here, led to so much more work. So repositories was something that at first, you know, we could go really far with this, right? I mean, think about your GitHub or Bitbucket or GitLab integrations. You could go and fetch them from the API and list them all out and let them, you know, do a bunch of checkboxes and so forth. Um, but this concept of the shift connection string or SCS is something that kind of already exists inside of subscriptions. So it wasn't too hard to just allow them to, to type this in here. And, you know, it's one of those things where they do get validated, but at the same time, if there was a mistake made here, you're basically just not going to receive a pull request and it's going to be a pretty easy solve. And so the weight of not only um, building on my side, building all of that API, that caching, that refreshing, the UI, the UX for, for people to select and, you know, connect different repositories or filter them, that's tremendous. It's a tremendous amount. And it's not to say I wouldn't eventually get there, but again, the point is, what's the smallest uh, feature I could build today? And uh, so this simple text box with this very straightforward connection string, which most developers are going to feel comfortable with, it makes sense, it's easily explained. Um, you know, there's examples already here. And again, with the validation, combined with the validation of this connection string, um, I think even on the uh, user side or the developer side, it's even easier to work with, in my opinion, than, you know, going through a selection or um, checking off or connecting to the different various services that you're part of, uh, and then finding that particular filtering down to that particular repo, you know, setting the branch. You're still going to have to type the branch regardless. So, so all those things were already weeded out, kind of by me on the MVP. Um, I think where maybe I knew that there was some additional work, but I felt initially that it was necessary, was actually this uh, final question: When do you want the automation to run? And of course, this also could have been a, a very tremendous thing. It could have been, uh, you know, twice a week on Wednesdays, you know, at 4 p.m., you know, time zones and all sorts of stuff. So I did whittle it down to be basically it had to run on a day of the week and it had to run at a certain uh, time. And in this case, the time was going to be a 24 hour format. So I did, again, make it pretty simple 
developers would get it, maybe not necessarily the, the most high end of, of user interfaces or user experience, the best user experience, but again, something I could iterate on. But this is where actually chatting with uh, Adam, and, and actually even before, you know, kind of Adam had, had mentioned it to me, uh, it was one of those things where this simple bit, just kind of taking a look at the code, this simple bit, the UX of it's fine, but this is where the implications of these decisions really start to kind of, um, they really started to kind of weigh on me, which is in a way why I sought uh, Adam's, uh, you know, kind of input. I wanted to bounce it off someone else familiar kind of with the product, familiar with the concepts, and kind of see what they thought. So got some great feedback from there. But I was already a little bothered by this simply for the fact that since I, the original plan was basically to automate this and run it for them, of course, automatically, run it for subscribers automatically. But forcing them to choose a day now means that this automation really just couldn't be one directional. There actually had to be, it couldn't just be, okay, I'll run it in the future and that's it. I actually now had to maintain a memory of the past because now I have to internally run some kind of cron job or some kind of process that sees if the automation you wanted, um, you know, falls within this certain time frame, right? So if it's Sunday at, you know, 10 a.m., uh, well, if it's Sunday at 9.59, I don't want to run this. But if it's Sunday at 10 a.m., I do. But if it's Sunday at 10.01 and somehow I missed it, or, you know, this automation was already in the background running, well, now I have to do some fail-safes to make sure I'm not running it again. So even though these are two simple boxes, very simple UI, very simple UX, it led to so much more. It led to me creating, you know, this automated shifts table where I was going to have to start, you know, storing this triggered by. Do now I have to rerun these if they failed? It really started asking all these questions. And, and right there is when kind of my Yagni <laughs> senses were, were kind of tingling. Uh, and so, so because of that, I wanted some additional input. And uh, like I said, um, was able to kind of chat with Adam about it, get his, his input. And he said something that was really good uh, that I wanted to make sure to share. And that's basically that, you know, kind of to the original point of this feature, the whole thing here, the whole value add from a product standpoint is that this automation is just going to be run for you when it's time. In fact, the responsibility of knowing when it's time is is mine, is shifts. And so, you know, it's the responsibility of this product. So kind of asking them in a way for this kind of defeats that purpose, right? Because maybe the subscriber doesn't really know when the best time to run the automation is, for example. Patch releases uh, for Laravel are normally released uh, midday uh, Tuesdays. So, you know, you could go in here and put, you know, midday Tuesday uh, and say noon just to, be sh just to be safe. But what if the tag happened a little earlier? What if the tag happened a little later? What if there's a tag, uh, a patch release, uh, you know, kind of a quieter patch release on Friday, which happens sometimes, or later in the week, or not Tuesday is the point. So all of that fell on me as a service to offer that value. And as such, having this question kind of defeated that purpose. It, it, it made the user make a choice. So it was just some really good feedback, uh, again, just kind of from a product perspective that I thought was worth sharing. And so the ultimate result, let me just sign in here with my account on the live site. This was actually, I pushed this this morning. If we go to the automation tab, We'll see that actually that additional piece is trimmed down. And there were some other small uh, UI things, keeping the form tight up top, and I pushed the help text kind of down to the bottom. It's still linked, so it's easy to get to. Um, but the point is, is that you basically just uh, enable or disable it. It's disabled by default, and then once you enable it, you can basically enter however many repositories you want this automation to run on based on whichever plan you have. But the whole concept of knowing when to run it or have to schedule when to run it and me have to keep track of when your automation had been run was all removed uh, simply by kind of, again, focusing on that MVP, focusing on that minimal feature that can be pushed out and now iterated on. So again, while this won't be the final, this is what ended up being good enough. And again, that minimal thing I could do to launch this feature, get it out the door and allow my users to start uh, you know, taking advantage of it. So hopefully you found that helpful. Again, uh, if you hadn't seen uh, my talk before on practicing Yagni, you can kind of get the whole philosophy from it, uh, practicing Yagni.
available on YouTube. I'll link it uh, in the comments as well. So follow me on Twitter for more uh, videos in the future, and uh, feel free to leave any comments or uh, reactions on this. Thanks.